This edition of Mac Voices is brought to you by Ops Genie by Atlassian. With Ops Genie, your next incident doesn't stand a chance. Hi, I'm Chuck Joyner, and this is a Mac Voices briefing. Five essential pieces of travel equipment. Folks, I'm doing a little traveling this week myself, so I thought it only appropriate that I share some of the things that I think are pretty much essential for any kind of travel. Now, I'm quick to tell you, some things apply a little more to air travel, some apply a little more to car travel or train travel, but at the end of the day, these are all things that you should at least consider when you're venturing away from home. Number one, noise-canceling headphones. Some version of noise-canceling headphones are probably my number one piece of travel equipment for lots of reasons. I don't care whether you prefer the over-ear, like I prefer, or by the, the in-ear work for you, but they seal off the noise from the outside world. They let you be entertained or get some rest. And if you buy something with good noise-canceling capability, it also takes care of that annoying droning, hum, buzz, whatever, however you want to describe that you get on a plane or a train. They also can, if you do it right, they can also block out all the noises from your seatmates or the people all around you, those people incessantly talking in the, in the row in front of you or the kids screaming in back of you. My favorite way to do that is just with a simple white noise app between a nice uh, smooth white noise that I can turn up to whatever volume I need to drown everything else out and the removal of the plane sounds. Yeah, I'm in my own little world. And if I want to watch a movie or listen to an audiobook or a podcast, uh, I can do so so much easier and so much nicer. And there is a health benefit here because if you don't have to turn the volume up too high to override the noise of the plane or the train, it means that you're not pumping extra volume into your ears that in a situation where you really don't want to and for an extended period of time. I did a a briefing a few Mac Voices episodes ago about my choice right now, the Bose QuietComfort uh, Bluetooth uh, headphones, and that is a point. If you can afford it, get Bluetooth. Stay away from uh, the, the cords. They're fine and they sound good. It's just they're a bit of a hassle, and the last thing you need to do is drop your your cord and then try to be trying to find that when you're on the plane. So. Again, noise-canceling headphones are probably my number one piece of travel equipment. Number two, a luggage scale. All right, this might seem a little strange, but I don't know about you, but all too often, if I'm on an extended trip where I've had to take a lot more clothes than I can get on a carry-on, or if I've gone to a conference or trade show and maybe picked up a little too much swag, whatever, uh, and my my luggage, uh, my check luggage is balancing on that 50 pound limit that you that the airlines give you, and you're wondering, do I need to rearrange things? Do I need to take things out of my backpack? Can I take things out of my backpack and put them in my check luggage, or do I need to lug other things around? Um, do I need to try to stuff something else in my carry on? A small uh, luggage scale will serve you well. Because now you can get a realistic reading of how much you have and where your limits are. And I've also had situations where you know I measure it out, I'm close, but uh, I take it to the airport and the airlines argue with me that no, it, on their scale it weighs something different. And I've been surprised. If I can pull out the luggage scale, weigh it there, and say, look, I'm, I was trying to act in good faith, and I took the steps, and I'm a couple, couple pounds over, um, they have let it slide. So it also arms you with just a little bit more information. And I know what you're thinking, that it's going to add a lot of weight. These things weigh only a few ounces, and they've saved me more than once from either hassles at the airport or from paying that uh, heavy bag free fee. A spare battery or two. Today's iPhones, iPads, and laptops have pretty darn good battery life, and they'll probably carry you through most travel situations, most normal travel situations, without any trouble. It's the abnormal travel situations you have to worry about. There are plenty of times that you sit on the tarmac waiting for an hour, maybe longer, uh, for a thunderstorm to pass or for your plane to be able to take off, and that just adds that much more time that you're depending on the built-in batteries. That's why I tend to carry at least one or two spare batteries to charge my devices. First, I carry one of the larger anchor batteries. 
Now, with this, you need to figure out what you're going to use and how much you really need because you are balancing off weight, which you will have to carry, with uh, capacity and with size. In my opinion, Anchor has some of the best value in batteries going. So decide what size you need uh, to charge an iPhone or an iPad, how many times you might need to charge it, and exactly what your objectives are. Take a look at the specs, see what the cost is and what the weight is, and buy what's right for you. The other battery I like to carry is this little Jackery 6000 milliamp battery for a couple reasons. First are the built-in cables. It comes with a built-in lightning and a built-in micro USB. And between those two connections, you've probably got any of your mobile devices covered. Second, because they are connected, you never lose them, and they're short enough that they don't create a big bunch in your pocket if you decide to plug your phone in and put both the battery and your phone in the pocket and let it charge while you're not using it. And the same goes for your Apple AirPods as well with the lightning cable and any other small device that you might have that demands micro USB. This isn't going to power you through international flights, but it is going to give you that little extra boost at the end of a busy conference day to make sure that you're online or able to access information with your iPhone or that you have the AirPods ready to go with a full charge at a moment's notice. Ops Genie by Atlassian is sponsoring today's Mac Voices. Getting alerts immediately is critical when an incident occurs. But that's not enough. Getting them to the right people, the people who can really make a difference, is what matters. That's why you need Ops Genie from Atlassian. Ops Genie lets you and your team respond to incidents the right way, the efficient way. Engineers get the engineering notices. Operations get the operations notices, not the other way around. Your team members on the East Coast get East Coast notifications, while your team in London get London notifications. So problems get resolved quickly by the team members who can handle them. I just logged on to a financial services site the other day, or tried to. It didn't load for an unusually long period of time, and then I got a database error message. Needless to say, I wasn't impressed. The site remained in that state for a good 30 minutes. Now that doesn't sound like much, but those were 30 minutes that I was an unhappy customer. And they were 30 minutes I spent thinking about moving to the competition. I'm sure that site wasn't using OpsGenie. If they had been, the right team members would have known, and as the downtime stretched beyond a few minutes, the issues would have been escalated so more resources could be dedicated to the problem. That's what OpsGenie lets you do for your customers. You don't know when your next incident will occur. Be ready when it does by visiting OpsGenie.com right now, sign up for a free account, and add up to five team members free. See what OpsGenie can do for you. That's OpsGenie from Atlassian at OpsGenie.com. Never miss a critical alert again with OpsGenie. Thanks to OpsGenie and Atlassian for sponsoring this week's Mac Voices. Number four, a travel vest. Not everybody's going to agree with me on this one, but I have to tell you that I really don't want to fly without my Scotty travel vest. All the advertisements are absolutely accurate. These things have 20, 30 pockets. They have pockets for everything, and they make it so convenient to carry all your essential stuff and more as you travel. Before I leave home, everything comes out of my pockets and goes into my travel vest at their designated spots. I get to the airport, it's a piece of cake to walk through security. I take the vest off, put it on the conveyor, um, go through the metal detectors, pick it back up, and keep on going. Nothing ever falls out because all the pockets are zippered. But almost more important is when you get on the plane, as the airplane seats seem to shrink constantly, it's really difficult to get things out of your pockets. And that's where having the, the breast pockets available on the Scotty travel vest makes so much sense. Because I can keep my AirPods, my phone, my wallet, anything else I need easily accessible at that level on my chest. Never have to try to lean over or dig through my pockets for anything because my pockets are empty. You can buy lightweight versions or heavier versions for winter travel, but it's just one piece of gear that makes life for me so much easier because I've got everything in that vest that I need. Not only that, 
But if you travel frequently, it's a good idea to take some of those pockets that maybe don't get used every time and stick some essential things in there that are just nice to have that you don't think about maybe picking up before you leave. Throw a couple Kleenexes in. Throw maybe some Advil in one of the pockets. Um, throw a couple Band-Aids in another pocket. Just little things that are super convenient to have and you know that they're right there. So it's almost like a little emergency kit in your vest that doesn't take up any space and you don't even know you have it until you need it. Number five, a multi-port charger. We're all traveling with more and more devices. iPhones, iPads, Apple Watches, Apple AirPods, all of those need to be charged when you finally make it back to the hotel room. And folks, I've said this a couple places and I'm gonna keep saying it. I don't want to plug my devices, and I don't want you to plug your devices, into the USB ports that are supplied by the hotel or the airport for a couple reasons. First, you don't know who wired these things. And as I'm fond of saying, if they're the same people that take care of the uh, hotel Wi-Fi, you could be in serious trouble. Because these are plugs that pass power into my devices. And the last thing I need is to have my iPhone or my iPad fried, especially when I'm away from home. Second thing is, don't forget that your USB connection can send data through. Now, I'm not quite paranoid enough that I think that that USB uh, port on the hotel lamp is sucking out information from your iPhone. But on the other hand, why take the chance? So that's why I travel with one of the Anchor 4 port uh, USB chargers. It's especially important to note in my mind that you want a foldable plug because this is something that's going to go in your luggage, most likely in your back backpack, and you don't need to be dealing with that protruding plug. So make sure you get one where the plug folds down. But this way you've got a, a device from a reputable manufacturer who is going to be able to charge all your devices as safely as you're going to be able to charge them when you're away from home. It's a little more expensive than just carrying around cables. It's, a, it's definitely a little more weight than just carrying around cables, but I'll take that for the safety every single time. So those are five pieces of tech gear that I consider pretty much essential for any kind of travel. If you have pieces of tech gear that you think are essential, let me know, chuck at macvoices.com, and maybe they'll make another uh, Mac Voices briefing. Um, there are plenty of great travel pieces of gear out there, and I'd like to hear what your favorites are. So until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Mac Voices Facebook group and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us at patreon.com slash macvoices and join these folks who help keep Mac Voices coming to you. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.